Welcome to this small demonstration video of System Air Cat. My name is Ulf Bang, and today I'm going to tell you a bit about the functionality we implemented for ISO 16890. You can find the new dialog by clicking the toolbar bottom up here in the top of the user interface, but you can also access the functionality directly from the filter dialog. But what is this? ISO 16890. ISO 16890 replaces the old EN 779. EN 779 was only based on an average particle size of uh, 0 0.4 micrometers. And the new uh, ISO 16890 is based on three particle size fractions. We have EPM1, EPM two and a half, and EPM ten. It requires a minimum filtration efficiency of fifty percent to be classified within these three categories. And there is actually also a fourth category. If the filter is less than fifty percent efficient of PM ten uh, particles, then it will be classified as a coarse filter. So we end up with. 30 filter classes divided over the three particle sizes EPM1, EPM2.5 and, and EPM10 in steps of 5% inefficiency. And then we of course have coarse filters. The standard can also recommend what total filter efficiency you need for your system depending on the outdoor environment and the application. In this table, it uh, classifies the outdoor environment in three classes, ODA 1, ODA 2, and ODA 3. ODA 1 is countryside, and ODA 3 is mid-city. The applications is divided in supply air classes from SOP 1 to SOP 5. It also has a classification as general ventilation or industrial ventilation. So if we have general ventilation and we have rooms for permanent occupation, it will be a SOP2. If we have rooms without occupation, a garage room, data centers, underground car parks or alike, then we have a SOP5. If we on the other hand has hospital with hygienic demands, then it is a SOP1. There's also a reference table where you can see that a specific outdoor air class and the application, then you can see what the re recommended uh, filtration efficiency should be in your uh, ventilation system. Let's take an example. We have outdoor air three. We are in the city uh, at a hospital. So we have high hygienic demands. So it's a SOP1. And if we check the reference table, then we can see that ODA 3 sub 1 will require an EPM 1 90% filtration. If I look in my system cat, I can see that I actually only have a EPM 185% as the highest efficiency for EP1 particles. And here I need to combine filters in more than one filter stage. How do I do that? I'm aiming to have a total filtration of EPM1 90%. But even though a filter is EPM 10 70%, then it still filtrates some of the PM1 particles. And in this case, you can see that we actually have an efficiency of 25% for PM1 particles, uh, even though it's a PM10 filter. If we calculate the total efficiency from this formula, the, and we select a filter combination of an EPM10 70%, and EPM 185%, then we will see that we actually get a total filtration efficiency of 90.25%. And that is, of course, sufficient when our 
requirement was 90%. Let's look at System Air Cat and do the very same example. This is a basic Geniox 14 and uh, let's start by uh, putting in a panel filter M6 or EPM 10 70%. Okay. Our main filter should be a EPM 1 85%. Okay. So now I have a stage 1 and a stage 2 filter. So let's check what our ISO 16890 calculation says. So I start by putting in that it is an industrial application that I'm looking for. I have a SOP1 environment and an ODA3 outdoor environment. So that means that my minimum recommended filter efficiency should be 90% as we calculated in the presentation. We have a filter stage 1 of EPM 10 70%, a filter stage 2 EPM 1 85% that we selected in the unit. The system automatically recognizes the right filters and the total calculated filter efficiency is EPM 1, 90.25%, that means above the 90, so we actually meet our target. If we look at the printout, then we introduce the value on the front page. If we zoom in a bit, then we can see that filter ISO 16890 is here is the first value on the filter, 90.25. Supply air filter is EPM 1070% plus a EPM 185%. And the extract is an EPM 1060%. This concludes the small video about ISO 16890. And I wish you a good day.